In the latest Asian Economic Integration Monitor, they've lowered their growth projections for developing Asia to slow to 6.6% in 2012 and 7.1% in 2013. They say the external environment for the region has worsened and three major risks to growth exist. Uh, these are the deepening Eurozone recession and weak growth in the United States. These poor prospects has meant more investments flowing into Asia's growing economies, but the concern is that these could be volatile. They warn that the Chinese government's attempts to rein back stimulus measures and tighten policy may lead to a slower expansion than forecast. All of these factors mean that Asian economies need to transform the economies to become more dependent on domestic demand and rely on new growth markets. For more on this, we're joining our studios in Singapore by Professor Iwan Aziz, one of the authors of the report. He is from the Asian Development Bank. Mr. Aziz, thank you so much for joining us. Despite all of these risks that were mentioned by the Asian Development Bank, we've seen some Southeast Asian economies such as Thailand, Indonesia, and the Philippines growing better than expected vis-a-vis -vis their North uh, Asian counterparts. Well, the key word for that part of the world, uh, that is the Southeast Asian economy, is really domestic demand. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, when we talk about the domestic demand, you can talk about investment, you can talk about consumption. Now, most of the sources of the domestic demand growth in that part of the world is consumption. Mm -hmm. Now, that brings to the question whether this is sustainable or not. Uh, the so you need the additional investments to be able correct. to sustain this growth? Correct, because you cannot sustain growth just relying on consumption all the time. They have to start seriously thinking about putting more investment improving the business climate, invest, uh, investment climate, and things like that. But for the North uh, Asian economies, export to GDP is still in the low double digits, but they're being uh, affected by the slowdown in Europe and the United States. That's right. See, this is what is very critical because one cannot only look at the share of export in the total GDP to show how dependent is the economy on the export because uh, take, for example, in the case of Japan, the export over GDP is less than 20%, but we know very well that the impact, or jargon in economics is multiplier, the multipliers of export on the rest of the Japanese economy is so big. So for that part of the world, uh, they cannot really just reduce the export and mm -hmm. shift directly and immediately to the domestic That's demand. why you are suggesting that Asian economies rely on new growth markets, particularly inter-regional trade and other emerging economies such as Latin America and uh, South uh, and uh, Africa. You read it correctly. And this has happened actually mm. since 1997, since the Asian financial crisis. But the process of the increase intra-Asian trade as well as trade between Asia and other emerging markets accelerated after the GFC, after the global financial crisis. But uh, that is a medium to long term plan. Right. Uh, what about the near term, given the risks around the world? Do Asian governments and central banks still have room for additional fiscal measures and uh, monetary easing? Yeah. See, like anything else, uh, with all this story, basically the regions will have to go through the period of transition. And during the period of transitions, there will be some slowing down. And that is what we are watching today, what we are observing today is all parts of the world is slowing down, including Asia. But even with that slowing down in Asia, we are still observing double track growth, where emerging market, especially Asia, is still growing faster than in industrial countries. We'll have to leave it there. Iwan Aziz from the Asian Development Bank, based in Manila, but joining us in our Singapore studios. Great to have you with us.